Number eight, Georgetown hosting Villanova. Hoy is coming off a loss to Louisville. Second half, Corey Fisher driving, can't get the layup to fall. Nova with 15 straight second half misses to that point, but they were still in this game. Later, G-Town up two, Roy Hibbert, the lay in N1. They're up by five, just over a minute to go. Nova down two, Scotty Reynolds driving, getting the lay in, we're tied at 53. Under 10 seconds to go, Reynolds losing the ball, scramble for it, Jonathan Wallace gets it, tries to dribble up court right here, and he's bumped by Corey Stokes, and the foul's called with .1 second left. Oh, no. Some contact. Jay Wright not happy. So Wallace on the line. If he makes one, the game is basically over. He does. He would also make the second one. And Villanova cannot pull off the upset. Georgetown survives 55-53. to It's the Hoyas' first win in seven tries at home against Nova. Well, it certainly was a very interesting, at times ugly game here tonight. Both teams had prolonged droughts without a field goal. Georgetown had two of them of seven and a half minutes or more. Villanova won almost 12 minutes without a field goal in the second half. Villanova down by 12 in the second half. They rally back to tie it. They get the ball back with 30 seconds to go, perhaps a chance to win it. And a very controversial ending. Scotty Reynolds tried to win the ball game for Georgetown, or for Villanova, rather. Good defense by Rivers, and Georgetown got the ball back. Georgetown gets the ball back and the clock running down. You can tell there's no shot going to be had unless there was some sort of timeout. But a foul called on Corey Stokes, and there's no foul there. I mean, th this uh, is just this point an in the game. It's just an awful call. And it's one of those things where an official made a bad reaction and with .1 seconds to go. I think what happened, and we see it from this angle, if there is contact there at all, it's tough to tell how Stokes initiated But I believe... Wallace goes out of bounds, perhaps on that step, and it's when Bob Donato, the official right in front of your screen, saw that, that then he felt compelled to put his arm in the air. But, boy, just... But you know what? I mean, I understand that there's a justification for it. You can make any technical justification you want for some of these calls, but the truth is, at that stage of the game, when you're 80 feet from the basket, that's one where you, there was no foul, and you don't see the guy's foot on the foot on the sideline. It's I mean, that, that's just what you can't call that right it there. Came on the it's it looked a like there was a lot more contact when Reynolds went to the basket on the yeah, ensuing no play. Question. Where, I mean, it, he's, he's trying a, to win. It's it. a senior. He sold the call. Now, if you talk to officials, they'll say you call it the same way the beginning game no. to the end of the game. The no, bad ones do. <laughs> I, I don't think I don't think you do. I think that's like let's go to overtime. The clock was visible to right. the officials on the perimeter too. 80 feet from you the know, basket. That's a very difficult, impossible way to lose a game. And, 